All right, so there's a question about Golang, and the code that somebody sent to me is right here. And their question is kind of about type. And we have 42 being assigned to A, and then we have the address of A being assigned to B. And then we're printing out the two different addresses. And so if we just look at this code that the student sent over, we see that we have two different addresses. These are the addresses where a value, a value is being stored. A value is being stored at this address. What type of value is being stored at that address, right? So that's the interesting question to me. And I think that we could understand this a little bit better if, you know, we printed A and we printed B, we would see that right here we've got 42 and we have an address. So 42 is being stored here and we have an address being stored there. If we look at the type of each of those, I'm just going to do a print F, print F, and then we're going to do percent T for type and give it a new line and then come down here and do that and percent T for type. And if you're wondering uh, how that worked out, you could go to godoc.org and look at the FUMPT package and inside the phone package, internet's slow. Right here is the percent %t is a go syntax representation of the type of the value. And then we have escape characters, command f backslash m. I'm not sure if they're in here. There's an example of the escape character for new line, new line, uh, carriage return, new line. And I'm just looking to see if they're all listed here. I don't see them. I think that's in the Golang spec. And it's literally been a year since I've taught Golang. Very sad. <laughs> so uh, we'll look here in the language specification. And we'll just look for backslash n. And rune literals, here are all your escape characters in the language specification. So that's how we got there. And now if we look at these types, and, uh, and so here we have A, 42 is assigned to A. We have the address is assigned to B. And we're just going to look at their types. So let's take this out for a second and format it and run it. And we have A is storing a value of type int, and B is storing a pointer to an int, right? Which is true. So inside B, we are storing the address for where an int is stored. So B is storing an address. And so we could see that, right, if we just kind of came up here and added this line, what's being stored in each of those. So let's look at that. So run it, and uh, we have uh, int is being stored, right, in A. And in B, you know, it's a pointer to it. There's an address being stored, and at that address, there's an int. So what we store in B is a pointer to an int. So maybe this would make more sense if we saw it like this. Right, we have A and then we have B. So that's like the first part. And then the next part, let me just see if I uh, have the code here. A and B, um, we're printing out the addresses of A and B. That's why I wanted to talk about that. And so the next part would be, what if we had this, right? And we were printing out the addresses of A and B. So what are those types, right? So here is this, we're printing out the address of A. And so that's going to give us, if we run that, the address of A, and let's just put a little print line statement in there to separate these two pieces of code. Run it. So the address of A is this address. And A is now, right, if we look at the type of that, that's a pointer to an int because we, we're, we're looking at the address, and that address is pointing towards an, where an int is stored, right? So A, the value of A right here is a pointer to an int. And then here we have B, and we're taking the address of B, and that's stored here, right? So the address of B is this, and that's where a value is stored. And B, what type is B? B is a pointer to a pointer of an int. <laughs> and that's its type. So it gets a little bit wonky. But the main thing is it goes about values and types. And when you use the ampersand sign, it shows you the address of something. So here we have A, and we, we get that address, and we assign it to B. And so we see that here. 
And so that's the address of A, right? Because that's what, what is stored in B. And what type is B? It's storing a pointer to an int. And so that's the address, right? It's pointing to that address where an int is stored. And so that's what B is, right? It's a pointer to an int. It's storing an address where an int is stored. And A is just an int, right? So here A is just an int. Maybe if we broke it down like this, it'd be a little bit even more clear. So A is storing an int. We see A. Let me run that just to line it all up. A is storing an int. We see A, right? Uh, there's A. And then we see A as the type. Let's bring this up in private. And then B, B is storing an address. What is the address? It's the address uh, where the value of an int lives. So an int lives at this or is stored at this address. So B is of type pointer to an int. It's storing an address pointing towards an address where an int is stored. So B is a pointer to an int. Then if we come down here and we take the address of A, and let's just add another separator in there. Format, run. So we come down here and we take the address of A. We are going to get this one. That's the address of A. And if we look at the type, well, when you have the address of where an int is stored, you have a pointer to an int. And then if we take B, right, what's the address of B? Well, that's the address of B. That's where B stores its value. What value is being stored in B? The value that's being stored in B is a pointer to an int. So if we take the address of that, right, and ask what type is that, well, it's a pointer to a pointer to an int because we've taken an, the address of a memory location, which is storing a memory location where an int is stored. <laughs> address of the memory location, which is storing an address where an int is stored. So that's like a double kind of deal. I hope that helps. Hope it makes sense. It's all pretty logical. I mean, it's all absolutely logical, but it could take a little bit of time to wrap your head around. Please like and subscribe this video. It helps other people find uh, these GoLang videos. And then also, if you want to take the whole course, come over to Greater Commons, and uh, we have an entire course on the uh, two courses on the Go programming language. I was the first university professor in America to teach Go at the university level. And uh, we've got these two great courses right here. Wow, rocking. And we're trying to grow greater commons. So we'd really appreciate you coming here and taking the course here. Have a great day. Hope you're doing well. Bye.